Hi, I'm Gene Cavassis. At present time, I don't have a pickup truck, and I've really been wanting to get one for quite a while. But my wife informs me we're not buying another vehicle until the van dies. I've been running it without oil for two years, and it still won't die. So the next best thing, I'm going to build a utility trailer that I can pull behind my Jeep. So in this video, we're going to build an Ironton 5x8 utility trailer from Northern Tool. Let's get started. Now this trailer kit normally runs about $589. I got it on sale for $549 and it came with a $100 in-store gift card. So you may want to watch for some of these really good deals. The three boxes came with the small box containing the cross members, a spare tire plate, more cross members. The longer box had the side rails, the tow bars, and the axle. Two tires, the fenders, the two inch coupler, the front and rear spring hangers, and of course the leaf springs. Four fender brackets, the coupler base and the stand base, along with plenty of hardware and a lighting kit. So now we're going to start laying out the basic shape of the trailer. So moving these parts out of the way and putting the two side rails down, I'm going to put some of the cross members into place. It shows four cross members plus a large C channel that is the center of it. Now moving these around a little bit and trying to locate the proper holes, I'm not finding that large C channel. So looking at the instructions, it shows it should have a large C channel. It doesn't exist, but it did come with two more of the cross members. So I'll put them together like an I beam and slide those into place. I think this will work and the holes line up to bolt it in. So now we're on our way and we're going to start just setting the bolts into place and just hand screwing the nuts on the back side. Now the nuts are a lock nuts, a nylon style lock nut, so you can't get them very far. Now it's showing the leaf spring hangers and the tow bars, but I'm not seeing the bolts for them. So it looks like I'm going to have to flip over these cross members and see if the bolt holes are there. Yeah, I think that's going to work. So we'll set all these bolts back in. I think I have better luck looking at the photo in the box. Now setting the leaf spring hangers into place, the larger one goes to the rear. We'll bolt those down. And like I say, right now I'm just hand tightening them all these pieces on until I know whether it really fits. I'm going to use a square to try to line up the corners and make sure that the body of this is square. I'll also take a tape measure and go diagonally corner to corner. By doing this, if I have the same measurement, I know the basic frame is square. I'll have to tap this side in a little, but then it's dead on. So now I'm going to go ahead and start tightening up some of these bolts. I was originally going to use just a hand ratchet, but my neighbor loaned me this cobalt 20 volt cordless impact wrench, and man, I think it's gonna really save a lot of time. In fact, I'm gonna have to get one of these. Using the hammer to tap in and make sure everything's straight, Nice thing with this too is the body is not painted, but powder coated. That gives it a real tough surface. Setting the leaf springs in, the bushing side goes to the front, and there's a larger set of bolts to push through. And on the back, the same size bolt goes over the top of the rear of the leaf spring. Once we have those tightened up, it's time to see how the axle fits. Now there's a divot on each end of this that'll help you line up to the top of the leaf spring. 
Once you have that, we're going to take the U-bolts that came with it and set on each side of the leaf spring. And using that plate, we'll set those on and, of course, screw down the lock nuts on this. Now, once again, the instructions showed it with washers, but instead it came with lock nuts. We're going to go ahead and start putting together the front tow bar. Now, putting this together and it's upside down, it's going to help me to realize where the tow bar will be located on the holes of the trailer frame. So after basically setting that in place, we're going to pick it up and line up those holes to the back holes. Now it looks like it should line up here and probably where we've already bolted in this center frame. Yep, it looks like it's going to line up with that. So we're going to have to once again back off a couple of these bolts and re-bolt in the frame. What I want to do this. Now because of the positioning of this we'll have to just use a hand ratchet to get these into place. It takes a little longer but it's ever bit as effective. Once we have those down, I'm going to come back and tighten down the spare tower holder and the front plates of the tow bar. Now placing a 2x4 underneath the frame will elevate it enough that will make it easier to set the tires onto the axle. Now popping the dust cap off and removing the slot nut and washer, you can slide the greased wheel and hub onto the axle. Now there's a bearing on the front so you want to make sure that stays in place. Once you have that in place you can place the washer back on and then tighten down the slot nut. Now the slot nut was larger than any wrench I had so I had to use a pipe wrench. Guys I know that's not the best but it was all I had. You align it so that you can put a cotter can through and then bend those over so you can place the cap back on. These don't have to be too tight. You want them to where the tire spins freely and yet you can slide it in and get that cotter pin in. We'll repeat the same thing on the other side and now we're ready to flip the trailer over. Now, this is a two-man job, but it's not that heavy, and it goes really pretty easily. What I realized what left was my son. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to put the coupler base into place and also finish putting some of the bolts and nuts in the top of the frame. I'm now going to set the two inch coupler into place and these come with a longer like three inch bolt that goes all the way through and then also the safety chain which you can put over one of the bolts with a large washer and then the lock nut to tighten up on them. Setting the fenders into place I'm going to use the two brackets that come from each side and there is a front and a rear and I'm going to just hand screw those down so they're still loose and allow me to set the bolts into the fender itself. Now these are using the same bolts that the basic trailer was fully assembled with. So it's not too tough to, uh, to figure out what goes where on these. Once they're in place, I'll ratchet down the uh, brackets and then I'll do the same with the other side. So this is a huge bonus because this allows me to put eight of them around here and you can put a like a two by four down in here and it'll help support 
your sides on that. So I'm really excited it came with these. Now this came with eight of these side brackets, so that's going to come in handy when building the deck and the sides. Getting into the lighting kit, you have the license plate bracket, two tail lights, two of the side runner lights, two mounting brackets, and a wiring harness. Setting the basic light brackets into the back, make sure the bar is facing to the back, and then you can, on this side, put the license plate bracket on it, slide that into place, and had two screws mounted on it so I just hand tighten those on so I can just take a box and wrench and tighten it up. On the front you have a hole in place on the side of it so you just set those through with the wire and then use a couple of self tapping screws to tighten up the mounts on the side. This is a great little trailer, but i got to be honest with you, these instructions are just about worthless. They've made a lot of changes to the parts since this was published, and uh, they never updated the manual. So that can be a problem when you're putting it together. I had to take things apart and reassemble them two or three times till I could get that combo right to work. But after it was all done, I'm really happy with the outcome of it. I used the minivan one last time to pick up some wood so that we can build the decking for the uh, trailer. Now, you could use plywood decking for the trailer, but I wanted to use traditional wood decking, so we picked up pressure-treated 1x6-inch decking, 8 feet long. Thank you, baby. Rolling the trailer out. Set that up. Now I'm going to measure the distance. Should be close to about five feet between these. Looks like a quarter inch under. And the beam itself is about two and three quarters. So I'm going to cut my materials down to about a quarter inch under five feet. And then I'm going to cut a half inch deep by inch and a half slot on the top on both ends of the side beams. Now you could use a handsaw, a jigsaw. I just decided to use the bandsaw because I had it available. So after cutting all five of these rails, I'm going to go out and see if they size in here. Now I cut these fairly tight, so it looks like that's going to work fine. And then installing them, they're tight enough that you have to kind of tap them into place. And that's okay. I want them to be snug. I got most of them in, except for one of them. I'm going to have to pull the bolt out of the bracket to get it into place. But that's okay. At least I know these are not going anywhere. Now I'm going to take the drill and drill through the pilot holes that are on the metal brackets and I'm going to use this to channel the wiring to the tail lights through. So laying out the the wiring harness, each side light has is color coded so like on this side it was yellow and brown, so I'm running those to that side. The other side is green and yellow, or green and brown. So with the wiring, I'm going to tuck it through the hole in the top, and then pull the wiring to the distance I need. There's plenty of extra wire. Separate it out, and luckily this came with some decent wire connectors that are a crimp down style. 
So you slide the wiring through all the way through and then do the same in the opposite direction with the other and then crimp them down. After you crimp it down into place, it's easy to just lock that down on tight. It gives it a good watertight seal. I'll do the same with the other one. And then the white wire on the side is a ground wire. So I'm just going to trim the end of the clip open, pull it apart, and opening up that bolt a little bit, I'm just going to tuck it underneath and tighten it down on for a good ground bite. And once again, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, setting the lumber decking into place, I'm just going to set it down at first to see how many boards I need. I had pre-measured and figured I would need 10 boards, so I bought one extra just in case. But it looks like in this case, I'm going to be fine with the 10 boards. Now, it looks like I've got some distance, but I want to bring it right to the edge of the wood. So using a couple of 10 penny nails as a spacer, I'm going to start aligning my wood down. Once I have it lined up, I'm going to put a couple 2x4s in these brackets to the front and set down that extra board to use it as an end piece to make sure that my wood is all straight with the end of the trailer. I'm going to mark where the 2x4s are underneath of each of the five brackets and I'll just draw a line across through the center of each of those. Now I'm going to use a two and a half inch deck screw that has a star socket to it. These are great because unlike a Phillips head, they bite and they are real easy to screw down in there. I'll put two for each plank on each one of the two by fours. On the front, I'm going to pre-drill those because it's just close enough that if you don't, you'll split that wood. After they're screwed down, I'm going to trim the excess off the back end. And use an orbital sander with a fairly rough disc, I'm just going to clean up the back and make it nice. Now I'm going to cut the drop-off pieces of those 2x4s to 16 and a half inches. Now these are going to be the uprights for the trailer sides and I had to trim the edging down so that they would fit snugly into those side pieces. I also cut them the tops on a not a 45 but about a 30 degree angle and sanded those too. Now I'll set two planks for each side and trim those down to an even eight feet. I'm going to set a two by four scrap and just clamp these down into, into place and drill my holes. I'm going to measure down with about a two inch space between each and center. And then just using carriage bolts, I will set and screw each of these into place. I also used a square to make sure that the upright board was straight with the side boards. And then using a piece of the scrap decking, I'll use that as a spacer between the bottom and the top side panels. And then measuring down in the same manner of two inch spacing, I'll pre-drill these and set my carriage bolts into place as well. Now on these, I'm using a washer and then just tightening down the nuts. Now I'm gonna need to trim some of these bolts on the 
insides. Also, I'll want to run a bolt through the bottom of those to help hold them into place. Now cutting the lumber for the back, it will be just under five foot so that they fit just perfectly between the rails on the sides. And then you're gonna repeat the same basic construction process. going to put together the tail piece of this. I don't want to call it a tail gate because you'll have to pull it out and not drop down, but I want it to be removable. Now I plan on coming back later when the weather's nicer and staining all the wood. So when I purchased the trailer, Northern Tool at the time had a special that if you spent over $500, they would give you an in-store $100 gift card. So I used that gift card to purchase some additional pieces for the trailer, like a great little swivel jack, a tow kit for the Jeep, four tie-down rings for the, uh, the bed, starting to sound like a Christmas song, and a couple of security latches to help lock down the back gate of the trailer. I also picked up some of these corner brackets for the front of the trailer sides just to secure those corners, and I got these at one of the big box lumber stores. If you have any suggestions, put them down in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back with you. Also, if you want to see some of the other videos, select some of these on either side, and I'll see you soon.